Hey guys, so today I'm here with a video discussing the benefits as well as the downfalls of the three major smartphone platforms today. Uh, of course, we do have the iPhone with iOS. We have Android with the many, many, many Android phones you see pretty much anywhere you look. And the upcoming Windows Phone 7. Uh, so basically, I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about it. I do get quite a few questions like, well, what's, why should I do this? What's the benefit of this? Etc. Etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to break it down for you guys, explain the benefits as well as the strengths, the weaknesses, all that kind of stuff of each platform. So to begin with, let's just go ahead and start with the iPhone, which is probably what most of you guys are more familiar with. Um, so basically, the iPhone is a single, unlike the other two, it is a single platform. So it's not like you can go ahead and find iOS on, you know, maybe like a Motorola device or whatever. Apple has only got it on the iPhone itself. Um, and of course, Apple, since it is Apple, of course, the iPhone is a really, really solid piece of hardware. In fact, the iPhone 4 is probably one of the best-looking smartphones available right now. Uh, so... With iOS, you get a very, very polished interface. Everything is really nice and smooth. There are really nice transitions. And it's a really solid OS to work with. You know, it doesn't get really laggy or anything like that, whereas sometimes, you know, other uh, OSs do. Uh, so that's one really major strength of the iOS platform on the iPhone is that it just works. And that's something that, you know, that's what you're looking for in a phone. Um, it does have quite a few other good features. Obviously, the App Store, which has uh, over 200,000 apps. I mean, literally, there are so many apps in the App Store. It's not even funny. Um, it does have multitasking now in the newer iPhones. Uh, multitasking, it's a little bit different from the standard, you know, Android multitasking, where, you know, everything just stays open. It's a little bit different. It's Apple's own take on multitasking. And I found it works pretty well. It's not perfect, but it actually does, uh, I think, the trade-off in a little bit better battery life. Um, for just a little bit less uh, successful multitasking, I guess, kind of is worth it. Um, so some of the other features in iOS include that it does, of course, have, you know, like I said, the full app store. You have a pretty nice interface. All the menus, like I said, it's a really polished interface. Um, one downfall, well, actually there are a few downfalls about the iOS on the iPhone. Uh, one is that, of course, it is only on one phone. So, unlike with Android and Windows Phone 7, if you want it, you're only going to be stuck with just one phone. So, you're not going to be able to, if you want a keyboard, there's nothing you can do. Um, you know, if you want maybe like a phone with 4G, again, nothing you can do. So, you are really locked into just the iPhone 4. Um, now, of course, if you like the iPhone 4 and it is available on a carrier that you like in whatever country you live in, then that probably will not be a problem. Um, another thing about the iPhone is that, well, Apple is really, really closed. Um, so I'm sure a lot of you guys will have heard of jailbreaking, which is basically the uh, basically you plug your iPhone in, and of course this does count for iPod Touches and iPads, and you will allow it to you know run different programs other than what Apple allows. So you can tweak the look of it, um, you can you know do all kinds of different things that allow you to just get the most out of it that Apple does not allow a, a by themselves. So there are uh, upsides and downsides to the iPhone. But in general, it is a really solid platform and probably is just, you know, taking the whole package in by itself is one of the best available. Now let's go ahead and move on to Android. Uh, now Android is actually an open source OS, which basically means that it is free for anyone to use, modify, do whatever you want with. And it's actually made by Google. Uh, so basically, Android is a really, really open platform. So like I was just talking about, the iPhone, iOS with Apple is very closed. You really, the only way you can get things is through the App Store. Whereas... Android is much more open. It generally is not that big a deal. To, you know, you can go ahead and sideload applications, so you you can get them through the App Store for uh, Android, which is called the App uh, Marketplace. But you can go ahead and get it through there. But you can also go ahead and you know you download apps through other methods. You're not just locked into just the one way. Um, in addition, there are a lot of customizations available for Android. Um, so. You know, you can go ahead and pretty much change anything you want, whereas, you know, on the iPhone you have to jailbreak. Usually on Android you can go ahead and just download applications or do whatever you want, and it's a lot easier. Uh, in addition, Android is a really, really fast-growing OS. Um, so what this means is that, well, it actually does have its benefits and its downsides. Um, on the one hand, it gets a lot of new features very, very quickly. I mean, just in the past year, I mean, it's jumped up a bunch. It's added so many new features. It's been really, really just, you know, just taking off like crazy. On the downside, however, is that because there are so many different phones and all these upgrades, you know, with all these really new, cool and new features, sometimes it can take a while. So just take, for example, the latest 2.2 update. Um, so it is out on a couple phones, but honestly, it has taken out quite a while, and some phones might not even get it just because it takes so long to trickle down. 
So even though there are a lot of really cool new features that are coming out, just because you buy an Android phone does not necessarily mean that you will be able to actually take advantage of those features. Um, so one of the biggest strengths of Android is absolutely the amount of hardware that it comes on. Because unlike the iPhone, you can get it in pretty much any sort of size, shape, form, pretty much anything. Um, so there's everything from really small phones like the Sony Xperia X10 Mini, which is I believe has only about a 2.6 inch touchscreen, all the way up to you know the Droid X, which has a massive 4.3 inch screen, a 1 gigahertz processor, really really powerful and high end. Um, so you can get physical keyboards, you can get pretty much anything you can imagine. Android is a uh, part of. Um, and in addition, it also is on pretty much any carrier, anything. So if you're looking for an Android device, you will not be disappointed as far as, you know, different hardware options or whatever. So pretty much any kind of style that you like is definitely going to be represented by Android. Uh, some of the downfalls, however, is that the OS is not as generally as quite as polished or quite as quick as iOS on the iPhone. So what this means is that, well, I don't mean that, you know, it's going to be like clunky and, you know, look like, you know, it's five years old or something, but just, ge just in general, the iPhone tends to look a little bit nicer. Um, there seems to be a better, a better unifying style just across everything, which, of course, is due to the fact that Apple does keep everything locked down. Um, also, Android devices tend to be a little bit slower than on the iPhone, especially when you consider that a lot of Android phones have custom skins. Uh, now, what custom skins mean? Basically, you know, the uh, you know, if you buy like, for example, a Droid X, it will be standard Android, but you know, they'll add just a couple little features, maybe like you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, which can sometimes slow down the phone. Um, so, in general, again, I love Android. It's a fantastic platform, um, and really, if you're looking for an Android device, like I said, the huge, huge strength of Android is that you can get anything you want. Um, to couple that with it being totally open, it's definitely a great way to go. So the next platform we're going to take a look at is Windows Phone 7. So this is Microsoft's entry into the whole phone space, and it really, really does look impressive. Um, so one thing uh, about Windows Phone 7, however, is that it is actually not out yet. Um, so it likely will be coming out in the next two months to two to three months with a lot of new hardware, but we don't actually have an exact date. However, we absolutely do know it's coming, and we have seen a lot about it, so let me go ahead and explain a little bit about it to you. Uh, so one really interesting thing about Windows Phone 7 is the interface. Um, it's nothing like I mean, you've ever seen on anything. Actually, the closest thing is if you've ever seen a Zoom HD, it has a really, you know, graphically, really just an interesting looking interface. It looks kind of, you know, like something you'd see on, you know, like the, a Back to the Future movie or something. It's a really, really cool interface where, you know, a lot of the text is, you know, actually pushed out of the screen where, you know, it just gives a really nice stylistic look. In addition, it also is going to be supported, of course, by Microsoft, who is doing a big, big job there, putting all kinds of money into making sure that it is a really solid platform, and all of the phones are going to be have to be have very, very high specs. So you're not like unlike on Android, where a lot of the phones can actually be kind of slow and kind of a little, you know, not all that fast and everything. You can go ahead and go over to Windows Phone 7, and every single Windows Phone 7 device is going to have to have very, very fast specs. So the, all these Windows Phone 7 devices have had to say that anymore. All these devices are going to be very, very fast. So to sum up, there's a lot to like with Windows Phone 7, and there are a few problems that, you know, it might or may not be an issue to you. Um, so among the really good things is that, of course, it's going to have that really nice UI. Um, now, I will say that I have never personally used it. Obviously, it's not quite out yet. But from everything I've seen, it looks really intuitive, and it looks really, really unique, which is something that you really can't say about, you know, iOS and Android. They both look fairly similar, you know, they ca carry a lot of the same things. Um, and in addition, there's also going to be really deep integration with Xbox Live. So you actually can go ahead and, with different games on the uh, Windows 7 platform, uh, Windows Phone 7 platform rather, you can actually go ahead and get Gamer Score. You can actually go ahead, some games will even be able to hook up to the Xbox 360. So you actually can go ahead and, you know, have like mini games on your phone that kind of come over to the Xbox. There's going to be a lot of really interesting integration as far as that goes. In addition, it's going to also have a pretty wide variety of hardware available. Um, so there should be different phones, you know, in different form factors with keyboards, without keyboards, etc., etc. And it should be available on at least a few carriers at launch, and it should be spreading out just like Android. So no matter what carrier you're on, you're on, and what countries and all that kind of stuff, you should be able to get a Windows Phone 7 device that will suit your needs. Some of the cons include there are a few things missing in Windows Phone 7 compared to the other two platforms. So this includes third-party native multitasking, so just like the iPhone, it will not be able to multitask your uh, third-party applications. Um, it will not have cut, and cut, copy, and paste at the beginning, although they have said they will be working on that. 
probably will be included in an update before too long. And in addition, it also will not have HTML5 or Flash support in the browser. So there are some problems with Windows Phone 7. It's not going to just be perfect right out of the box. But I do expect that they will go ahead and add pretty much all these features, you know, here within a few months, a year or so. So I don't think that, you know, you really have to worry about too much. It's got all the basics down, and the few things that it, that it is missing should be coming pretty soon. Okay, so to sum up, basically all three platforms do, of course, have their strengths and weaknesses. Um, you know, the iPhone is really solid in most categories. Um, you know, it's a really mature OS. You know, they've had a, quite a few years to go ahead and add all these little features that people have been asking for. So iOS, as far as, you know, feature standpoint, is pretty much just, I mean, not perfect, but it's really, really solid and among the best OSs. So if you decide that you're really interested in iPhone, don't worry about it. I mean, although the other two platforms do have good stuff, the iPhone you will not be disappointed with. Now, as far as Android goes, it is really a great OS, and the fact that you can get it in pretty much any sort of hardware you want, it's even coming in tablets, is really, really impressive to me. So I think that if you're looking for a phone, again, with Android, you will not be disappointed for, if for whatever reason, maybe uh, the iPhone is not on your carrier, or you're just really not liking Apple's, you know, style, you don't like how Apple works, then Android is absolutely a great choice. You know, of course, like I said, there are so many different varieties of hardware that you can get it on. Um, it's a really solid OS in general. So if you're, again, if you're interested in Android, then that's absolutely a great way to go because really there are just so many different choices. It's really open. You can customize it so much. The Android is really hard to go wrong with. Now, Windows Phone 7 is a bit more of a question mark. Um, now, the other two OSs have been out for quite a while. We've, you know, ha had a lot of hands-on time. I've been able to use them both very extensively. Windows Phone 7, however, is not out, and like I said, it won't be out for the next at least two or three months. Um, so I really ha don't know what to say about it. Um, just looking at it on paper, it looks like a solid OS. I won't rehash everything that I've said already, but I think that it has a lot of potential. However, until we actually see hardware, we actually see some actual phones running it, I'm a little leery to go ahead and recommend it. Um, I think that if you're buying a phone right now, and if you don't wouldn't mind maybe waiting a couple months um, to take a look at what Windows Phone 7 looks like, absolutely I would suggest it. You know, go ahead and get a hands on the store, see if it's something that you like. Um, until then, however, you might want to go ahead and just, if you really are not interested, Android or iOS, both are really solid platforms, and if you're interested, go ahead and you can go for either of them. Anyway, guys, I really hope that that answered all your questions about the different platforms. Um, I, like I said, I think all, they all have strengths, they all have weaknesses, but in general, you know, you really have to kind of try them out and see what works best for your needs. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching.